Okay, this is uh, October 2022, M1. This is question five. Uh, as you can see, it's a SUVAT question. And this is an unusual one. I must admit, I struggled with this when I was doing this. Uh, I'll try and model all my thought processes as we go through and do it. Uh, what I will need to do is to read the question and then pretty much say, you know, how we're going to solve this one. So it starts off, a small ball is projected vertically upwards with a speed of 29.4 from a point A, which is 19.6 metres above the ground. Right, OK. Um, ball is modelled as a particle, hits the ground, etc, etc. So it starts off, looks like a, a relatively standard one. I've got this sort of situation happening. Where this is point A, apparently. Uh, we know that at that time, u, let's just make that a bit bigger, sorry, u is equal to 29.4. Fine, so I've got u equal to 29.4 there. I know it's a height of 19.6 metres above the ground there. So yeah, fine, it looks like it's going to be okay. But it's the question that then catches me out. So it says, find the distance travelled by the ball while its speed is less than 14.7 metres per second. So, oh, right, OK, well, 14.7 metres per second. We know with all of these objects that if it starts off with U equals 29.4, as it's travelling up there, it gets lower and lower and lower, the speed, till eventually it becomes zero at that point. Then it starts increasing down. We know from symmetry that it's going to be going at 29.4 there. We know it's going to keep accelerating all the way down till it hits the ground. So if they want um, the distance travelled by the ball when the speed is less than 14.7, what they're saying is, and I decided in terms of explaining this, to suddenly start saying, right, okay, I'm going to say that this point here, which I'm going to call B, is when it's decreased, the speed has decreased from 29.4 to 14.7. I know what's going to happen at the point I'm going to call C here. At the top there, I know the speed is going to be equal to zero. And then I know, because of symmetry, there'll be another point down here when it's travelling at 14.7. And I'm going to call that point D. I'm only going to call that in terms of how I'm going to explain it to you now. Let's just get rid of that one there that what I basically want to do is to know what's happening in the journey B to C to D. Okay, that's the, the instance that we're interested in. All of that, the speed will be less than 14.7 because it hits at 14.7 here and it's just slowing down. It's slowing down till it gets to zero and then it's speeding up, but symmetrically on the other side, it'd be 14.7. So that's the journey that I'm interested in, is from B to D, okay? So I almost write that down so I can then say to the examiner, what I'm trying to do then is to find the distance from B to D, and I can't do that, but what I can do is I can find the distance from B to C, I can find that distance, because I'll have my super, I'll show you that in a second, and then I'm just going to double that. So in terms of my answer for the examiner, I'm now going to say, because I haven't written anything down yet, but I don't think I need to, if I just say, um, to explain it to them, uh, what's the best way of saying it? Um, find, uh, from B to C. So we'll have a look at it afterwards without any of my explanation. Does, is it clear there? From B to C, for that journey only, what will I have as my SUVAT? Well, S is going to be what I'm looking for. That's going to be the height difference between B and C. U isn't 29.4 then. U is 14.7 because it, I'm doing the journey from B to D, not from A to D or from A to anywhere else. So um, I know V is going to be equal to naught. That's a classic thing, isn't it, to get the height up to or get the distance, sorry, up to C, that's when it instantaneously is at rest, so V is equal to naught. I know A is equal to minus 9.8, I 
oh brilliant I've got what I always want no interest in tea at all I always want to have a situation where I've got three out of the four of them so I have got three out of the four of them there if I now decide to do v squared equals u squared plus 2as that's how I connect v u's a's and s's and it should work okay so naught squared is going to be 14.7 squared uh, I always do this quickly, and you should really get used to this as well. If, if we do this work, 2a is minus 19.6 times s. You can do it slower, but you know we're trying to help ourselves out as much as possible here. I'm not going to do all the rearranging of that. That's not complicated. Go away and do it. It comes to 11.03 meters. And then I must remember, 11.30 meters is just the height from B to C, or the distance traveled from B to C. Um, so distance from A to C, which is what I want, is two times 11, 0 0.03, 22. Reminder, uh, if we're using G as 9.8, everything should really be two significant figures. Okay, so hopefully that bit makes sense, but as I say, it caught me out for a little while. Let's carry on with part B. Part B says, find the time for which the ball is moving with a speed of more than 29.4 metres per second. So it's a really unusual question, but they really are using the idea here. If I'm now going to say this point E here is the point where the ball has gone all the way down and got to the same level at which it started off from. Okay, the 19.6 above. What I know is that if we want it to be traveling at more than 29.4, it never is for any part of that journey that I've just said. It starts off here at 29.4. We know it immediately starts decelerating, goes down to zero, comes back on and 29.4 there. So that means that the part of the journey they're interested in now is E there, I'm gonna call it E down to F. Don't know that I necessarily need to put all these letters in, but I'm just trying to make it clear to the, if I make it clear to you, then it's clear to the examiner as well. So uh, hopefully that is the case. So for part B, if I wanna find the time for which it's moving more than 29.4, I want the time from E to F. So I might just say that to the examiner. Uh, time when traveling faster than 29.4 is from E to F. So what I now need to do is to consider what my SUVAT is going to be for that situation there. So S, U, V, A and T. And now it's up to you, you've got a little bit of a judgment call to make here. What it makes sense for me to do, what I tell my students to do all the time, is if I've got a journey which is just traveling in that one direction there, then it makes sense to have downwards as being positive so that that's traveled 19.6 meters, not minus 19.6. A is 9.8, not minus 9.8. The speed 29.4, uh, or the velocity rather, is a positive one rather than a negative one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take downwards as positive. Don't necessarily need to do this, but I'm sort of reminding myself as well as the examiner. If I don't make any mistakes, then the examiner doesn't really care. They? they can just go through and do what we've got here. So what's happening? That journey is 19.6. So S is going to be 19.6. Uh, U is the 29.4, okay, U is 29.4 that it starts off with at that point there, so U is 29.4, uh, what am I looking for? I'm looking for the time, so in this case V makes no difference at all, I also put a dash there to show that it, 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 I'm not interested in it, A is 9.8, and so T, the thing I'm looking for, I leave that as my variable, Exactly the same as we had last time. I've got three out of the four. Anytime I've got three out of the four, I can do it. I've got um, S, U, A, and T that I'm using. So if I'm using S, U, A, and T, then that's S equals U, T plus a half A, T squared. 
So I'm going to get a quadratic in terms of t here. And again, but for the sake of the video, I'm not going to solve the quadratic for you. You can do that. But let's put it all in. We're going to get 19.6 is equal to 29.4 t. Um, and again, I think I said this previously in another video. If I've got half of, if I've got 2a, I know it's 19.6. If I've got half of a, I know that's 4.9. If you've done enough of this work, that should be coming sticks in nature to you. Right, make that into a quadratic. 4.9t squared plus 29.4t minus 19.6 equals zero. And I'm not going to attempt to try and factorize something like that. Um, it's very, very unusual that that would work. So let's put it straight into the quadratic formula. This is the last bit I'm doing for you. Minus B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC. I might need to drag this over a bit just in terms of fitting it all on. So B squared minus 4AC, 29.4 squared minus 4. And notice there's a negative in there, okay? So minus 4 times 4.9 times minus 19.6. I'm not going to put minus 19.6. I'm going to change that to a plus there. All over 2a. So all over 19.6. No, all over 2a. All over 9.8, sorry. All over 9.8. And then t is going to work out to be two different values. Uh, 0.61 is the positive one, apparently. One of them will be neg negative, so just disregard the negative. Negative. So t is equal to 0.61 seconds. That's the answer for that part. Just go back and check. It was the time. Yeah, it was the time I was looking for. On to part c. Nearly finished this now. This isn't too bad. Part c. So part c just says... Sketch a speed time graph for the motion of the ball from the instant when it's projected from A to when it hits the ground. And show clearly where your graph meets the axes. Yeah, absolutely no problem with that at all. This should be fairly straightforward for most of you. Uh, velocity time graph. And just quickly talk through it and then we'll do it. We'll talk through this a couple of times, guess. What happens from the minute I start there is it's decelerating, decelerating, decelerating till it hits there. Then from that moment onwards, it's accelerating, accelerating, accelerating till it hits the ground wherever down there. It's constant acceleration throughout. So we know what I've just said. It decelerates and decelerates down till it hits the ground. It accelerates, although this is just a sketch, what I would try and do as much as you can is to make these two gradients as close as possible it's because it's the same acceleration, isn't it? Uh, one positive and one negative. Right, what did they say they wanted? They wanted where it hits the axes. Well, we know that's 29.4 because that's the initial velocity. And how long does it take uh, up until this point here? If I haven't done that, then I'd need to work that out. But up till that point there, when V equals naught. No, I haven't done that, so I'd need to go back and just find when V equals naught what that's going to work out to be. Uh, I've done it previously on my work here, though, and I can sh tell you that that's when T equals 3 there. Okay, so when T equals 3, hits that, and that's enough for the answer. It's three marks. One of the marks is sort of for the shape, and then the other marks will be for working out those two things. I uh, haven't got time on this video to go away and work that out, but that's not particularly difficult. We're trying to find the time up until when uh, V equals naught there. In fact, let's quickly do it. It'll take two seconds. So we've got, um, if I wanted to find that, V equals U plus AT, where it starts off from 29.4, And the acceleration is minus 9.8 t. t works out to be 29.4 divided by 9.8. That's where we get our three seconds from. As to where we want to put that, whether we want to put that out of the way down there or beforehand, but either way, that gives us all the information 
that we need. Right, sorry, quite a long video for that one, but hopefully it makes sense, a slightly unusual question.